Okay, I'm a little late. It's Friday, February 2nd, and I'm going to dinner tonight. Solo dinner. I'm going to Chris Ono, Chef Chris Ono, who has taught me a lot. I've known him for a couple of years. I spent some time stodging under him. He has his own pop-up restaurant called Hansei. It's based in little Tokyo in LA. The Japanese tasting menu. Let's go. Yeah. And I found people who are in a well-off position, people who are doing pretty well, they talk about politics a lot because it's almost like sport for them. Yes. You know? So they go like, did you see what the Democrats did? Did you see what the Republic? Oh, I can't believe they want to pass this bill in the Senate. I can't. But on the ground, on the ground, people are literally going, hey man, that bridge is about. I just saw this post about how girlhood is not afforded to non-white girls that like resonates with me. Why do I have like one example of like black girlhood? In my brain, there are more. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, I know what you mean. I think there needs to, I really want to make something. And I'd like it to involve religion because religion is a part of so many young. Does this look familiar? Episode two. So here we have Sumo Kumamoto oysters today. Of a Japanese mignonet. What's uh, Chris's style is a little bit more California for. Uh, so we've got two different kinds. Of oh, so he kind of changed it. This should be celery root. Oh, what if Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Timothy. I'm gonna take you all to our James Irvine Japanese Garden. Two years ago, when I first started working here. There was no leaves whatsoever. However, last year, leaves started growing and oh. I got so excited. So hopefully this year, we get to see some fruits. Hey, this, this is light. number three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Do you like it? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just like making this off and grab the light in a sec. You want the light. Yeah. You're off the clock. <laughs> Hello, it is, what is today? It's Sunday, February. Today is Sunday, February 4th, and going over to Budenoki right now to go over a PL sheet. Now, this will be interesting because this is the business side of a pop up Sasha restaurant. I hope to show you guys some finances right now. I've had a really easy week. After the pop-up, I just slept, took care of myself, and I just edited a bunch of vlogs and videos for the pop-up. I think about how fortunate my life is, how I'm able to take a break after like a six day week and just edit versus having to do a more physically demanding job every single day, right? I think a very fortunate position I'm in that I'm not taking for granted. So I think the rain's really, really beautiful. I sometimes forget that it's, the water is not clean. It's pretty disgusting. <laughs> also rain heavily impacts the restaurant industry too. Cause people don't want to leave their homes. They just want to stay home and have a nice hearty bowl of soup or some shit. We're back at Budunoki. Most of the stuff, oh, most of the, how much of these really costs? Yeah, okay, cogs are, cogs are rare, yeah. but labor doesn't really move that much, right? Like, yeah. we would have shaved a little bit on the front of the house. Yeah. 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 All awesome. Without that. 
the, my explanation is the reason is the last money is the most profitable. Right? Okay. Can I talk about this percentage? These four? Sure. Like, uh, like, it's like target percentage. Yeah. Sure. Just like, I won't show anything else. <laughs> It's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, but that's always why, like, it's just so much easier. Picking up a friend uh, who showed up on an episode before. Want to take a wild guess? What's up, everybody? I'm going on a date with H. Crew. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be jelly. So, fluke and flounder. What's the difference between a fluke and flounder? Yeah, we're figuring out what we're going to make on Friday. Yes. Yeah. A flounder is a cold water flatfish. Fluke is a warm water flatfish. Is that is that correct, internet? Yes, I don't know. I mean, I got this info from the internet. Hidame is fluke, is fluke? and kare is flounder, I think. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I get Friday morning. Yeah, lightly yeah. season the fish, shave the truffles. Backpack it? Wrap it around, backpack it tightly, and uh -huh. just kind of let it sit for a sec. Uh -huh. And then butter poach that. And then use that butter because it's gonna smell like truffles. Does the does the truffle stick to the flounder if it just sticks sits there and like cures? Like with the salt, will it like stick? We'll see. <laughs> no, it's also, yummy. What is this car doing? It says no left turn from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And they're you know, trying to make a left turn. English is hard. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Lasita for an early Valentine's dinner date with Yes. H. Wu and Shoda. I'm nervous. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to play footsie on the table. Oh my god. What do you think, <laughs> internet? Left leg or right what? Le right leg, which one should I use? We're gonna sit side by side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be reviewing the restaurant. There's a, there's a few restaurants on the board that are getting reviewed right now, and I get to review three of them, so. Okay, so I was gonna ask you. You know, Sugalabo, Suga. Yeah. Oh, you're Suga, Suga guy. I asked him if I could stodge there for yeah. like a month and he said yeah sick dude so i think i'm gonna rip it like march and april yeah and just go there for a month month and a half do it and i'm gonna I mean, we'll see how it goes where is sugo is that in tokyo Sugo in the there's he has two spots i think sugo is in uh Rapongi area is it yeah. yeah at the end of the day those place teaches you systems operation discipline and those are important you know let's say hey let's do catering you someone's like hey h i want to do catering for five thousand people it's four courses we have about two hours to be able to do this dinner broadly saying like michelin stars in really nice restaurants are just very organized well okay so even in the chaos they can still execute it have different. you worked in french places a little bit where in japan in japan yeah when i was going to school i did french for like just three months, and then I did Italian for three months, and uh -huh. then I went straight to Japanese cuisine. Tokyo French is amazing, too. I think Tokyo yeah. French is one Better of the top cuisine. Regular French? <laughs> you know, I can't say because I don't know regular French, but yeah. the perspective that some Japanese chefs have of, like, okay, it really is ingredient first. It's about sourcing your ingredients like Japanese cuisine does in Japan, mm -hmm. and then they cook with it. And it's yeah. a lot lighter, a lot more delicate. Yeah. All right. Thank you for inviting me to dinner. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Hello. It's nice. I'm going to double dip it. It's a Kaya. Yeah. This is actually made from our really, really good. Things off camera? Mm -hmm. It's on camera. We're, we're filming now. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Wow. Wow. What is it? Oh, trouble. I would say you watch him when they just come out of the dirt. When they're still semi wet. Mm. How do you say truffle in Japanese? Mm. Tarafu. Truffle. 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 We're gonna make sushi rice with uh, truffle infused rice. Majikayo. 
the sweet mumblings of an old Japanese man. Just washing his rice. The technique is unique. Yeah. So I I was always told to use this part of my palm to kind of oh. squish down, so that way it's less pressure on the rice, so it cracks it less. Oh. And then we'll like them out. Wait, so you're like grabbing it. Almost. I mean, I guess it's more like this, but this is a little bit of a small area to wash it in, so. Today we make authentic truffle sushi. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it smells a lot like truffles. Holy moly, truffle rice. Kombu? Truffle. Mm. Rice blend. Yeah. That's crazy. I've never done this shit. <laughs> this is insane. This is gonna be fun. This is insane. <laughs> Close. <laughs> nice. Cool. Oh my god. Konnichiwa, Asakana-san. You ready? Yep. This is where his spine all is. Oh. So, usually at this point, I'll put a guitar cord right through the top Spinal of the cord. Yeah, top. Hopefully, it won't jump around on me. Because when you do the spinal cord, it fully dies quicker too. Yeah. And now, oh I'll just God. let it run. And get that blood <laughs> run out for 30 minutes or so, usually. Right. Holy shit. I use a new brush like this. Yeah, this takes off the scale, so you don't even need to do it to this way. No. Um, I do this for especially flounder, eel. Um, why is because it's such a slimy fish that if you do this part well, then it's just easier to process later on your cutting board. And the thing about white fish is you want to be careful of damaging the fish, but since this is such a fresh fish, uh, the meat's still gonna be nice and firm, so you don't have to worry as much about smashing the fibers. Ooh, look, it's got eggs. Huh? Really? Yeah. There we go. Look at that. Whoa. Look at that beautiful. Oh it almost looks like chicken butts. <laughs> Look at that. It looks like a chicken butt. Dude, what? I've never seen... I've never seen this. So, sukibiki style. Let me see if I can do sukibiki with this knife. Like this one is a pretty sharp knife, so it's hard to tell if I've actually cut through the inner skin or not. Smell those truffles still. The truffles crazy. Are you doing a great job? Arigato. Oh. Oh, oh you're killing it. Oh no. I got a little cut in there. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. That's four table thirties here. Four <laughs> Like, 
I don't know, for that also, but can I show you a trick? I did like this. Oh, do I do this and it's less damage on the fish too. Wait, that is. Ramen shoot. Ramen shop or something? Yeah. And um it was all directed by Chinese and Japanese people. And it was literally about that. Really? Yeah, about like the grandma not liking the kid because he's Japanese and wasn't supposed to happen because the mom is Chinese. Mm -hmm. Um I think it's a I think it's, you know, our responsibility, our generation's responsibility to teach the next generation to not hate us much enough. Yeah. And the people who hate, unfortunately, can't be wasting your time on people like that. So I follow this line. Yeah, we're good, yeah. This little piece on the scale that you yeah. can kind of see. But I just go from here, and go straight down. Yeah. I'm just making sure I'm on the right track. So you can still feel Whoa. the meat moving. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it like twitches. Oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> There we go. I need to unlock it. Oh. Mmm, that smells great. That truffle Holy moly. Do you have a rice bread or something? Oh my god, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. 
Dude, this smell is intoxicating. It reminds me of that one that, one that got away. Huh? What are you talking about? Not the Hannes, yeah. Okay. Then I do kind of like Avalon style, where I'm not like crushing it, but I'm just lightly just crumbling it up. And the beauty of these is um, you can put extra seasoning in there and really make sure there's enough seasoning that goes around. And if there's too much extra, mm -hmm. the wood soaks it up. So it's kind of a nice little, nice little mix up. Kind of flatten it out. Make sure your shamoji is clean. So one thing I like to always do is kind of at the end, making sure you kind of wipe the sides down. Mm -hmm. And then this because if you get like dry rice bits and it sits out for 10 minutes, that little piece can get crunchy and then get mixed in later. And then you have like one piece of crunchy rice in your sushi rice. Mm. So now we let this sit for about 10, 15 minutes and then we flip it over. We lightly do the same thing and it's about ready or you can let it sit for a little bit longer depending on your preference. We're gonna make some nigiri. Grabbing the fish, small amount, lightly, hold it like this, flip it, and then fold the edges, lift your pinky and index. Wow. We'll do some. Mm. Next one. I'm gonna grab some soy sauce and pre-season it a little bit like that. Won't need a lot. Grab a piece of shiso. And I'm gonna place it down so it shows through the fish. And then I get my sushi rice. I'm gonna do this one right here. Dollar blue. Caviar, right on top. So, so instead of wasabi, we'll do a hefty amount of yuzu kosho right inside. Double, and then. Wow. We'll do the angawa. First one. Chef, why do you wet your hands before you touch rice? Oh, so there's a little layer of wetness and the rice doesn't stick on my hand. Mm. Truffle rice. Truffle rice. So this is the angawa. It's the prized area because it's right by the fin and it's got a lot of texture and crunch. So I'm gonna do a little small nigiri piece on these. And then we'll do a little bit, a little bit of salt. Tiny dash. Wow, wow, boy, at the end. Oh. The Angala. I'm gonna do the wasabi on top. <laughs> More salt. But I think that's a fun bite to be able yeah. to grab some extra truffle like that. Yeah. Damn. This one's with ume salt, pickled ginger, a little bit of chives. Soy sauce, grated daikon, and yuzu kosho. This one is caviar, perilla, soy sauce, and gawa, lightly charred with binchotan, salt, olive oil, and lemon. This is the engawa with a little wasabi, salt, and a bunch of truffle. Really pushing, I'm just squeezing inward. Uh, you're just kind of going lightly, so it's like inward and from the top, but it's more just like kind of lightly putting pressure, yeah. but not too much, but yeah. But like yours is, I would say the only thing is you just want to tighten it more okay. on the sides. Nice but side. like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is literally just the amount you do. Yeah. Yeah. Reps. Reps. Yeah. Reps, reps, reps. I never have krilla with sushi because. Yeah. It's nice though. So is shiso, but. Yeah. The Korean Japanese fusion. Mm-hmm. 
That's awesome. So, shall we do a sushi pop-up? Let us know where and when. Go ahead, sell some of this stuff. What's the guy that's having this? No, it's the guy that's having this stuff. It's more so like... Yeah, Eight thousand. Like caviar sales are going to Children's Hospital LA. That's right. So doing a great thing. Three thousand. Shout out Petrosian. Shout out Petrosian. Three thousand yeah. bucks. All right. Thank try you, it Petrosian. again. There we go. Hey, we did yeah. it. Ideation of menus to like actually prepping to like actually serving and taking care of people and like the stress of like being in a busy the realness of it but also like to come out the other side and be like hey like here's this like great, great thing we did as a small yeah. business right you know we get it's stuff we're doing it even if like it's it's kind of like even after all of the the ups and downs of whatever this entire problem went like we can look back and be like, we had a great time. We did a good thing. Yeah, yeah I take it. Yeah, doing great. One of those here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, like and subscribe. Yeah, like and subscribe. <laughs> Everything we've done, it's all about balance, yeah. right? It's like, that's like something I definitely learned. Is that it is this balance, it is this dance. It's kind of art, kind of science, right? Um, and it's about like, I think like sustained success. They're just like something building something sustainable. Like there's, it, it is about balance. Whether that's between like employee and employer, or like restaurant and guest, right? Like you don't want to price something to just rip people off. Like and here with Udo, like we try really hard to price things affordably and like deliver value, which means hopefully people come back. Yeah. Right? Like that's something we genuinely work really hard. On. Yeah. Random wisdom that I've learned <laughs> over years, years. Yeah. Do you know how many people have been to Buddha since I'm like, okay, we've been open four months, October, November, December, January, four and a half months. So like, well, I average like hundred a night. Yeah, I was gonna say like, if we call it a hundred a night, yeah. we've been open. Yeah. So that's five hundred a week. We open in like eighteen weeks, uh, right? About nine thousand. Something like that. 9,000 people-ish, roughly. I mean, that assumes, like, unique guests. Yeah. But that's something I think about, too. Like, yeah. Uronoki, we always yeah. joke that, like, this is a 40-seat coffee shop, yeah. because that's what it was when we took over. It's a 40-seat yeah. coffee shop. Um, and what I know is, your pop-up week, <laughs> we served we, two days of pop-up. We also did four days of regular service. We served 840 guests in a week. We did 840 guests in our 40 seat coffee shop. Like that's that's what's crazy to me. Um, God damn. I think Dan's walk, dog just walked in, so there goes all the productivity. <laughs> but I hope that was a great conversation. <laughs> that's great. We did it. Yeah, we did. Thank you. They they got their bonus. Yeah, we made them. Uh, we came last week. We had told them it was it was on their paycheck from last week, and we we're like, hey, it's from us. Yeah. Alright, I gotta go. Appreciate it. Um, Thank you. Float around until I gotta run. Alright. <laughs> <laughs>